All right, Cancer, welcome to your monthly horoscope for March 2015. My name is Athen. All right, so this is a very transformative month. Lots going on in the astrology, and it's all what we make it. It's all what we make it, and it's involving that Uranus-Pluto square, okay, which has been this ongoing theme between breaking free for our freedom, taking charge of our life, and making changes where appropriate. Now, this has been over the past three years, so now we're coming up to the last aspect of it here in March, finishing it up, okay? And it's very powerful because <clears throat> not only is it that aspect, the tail end of that, but also the fast-moving planets are all going over Uranus while this is happening, and the, since the south node is so, so close, has been so close for the past few months, the fast-moving planets are going over the south node, including the sun, which of course is the solar eclipse. So uh, an eclipse with the Uranus-Pluto square with all these, these triggerings of the fast-moving planets makes this a pretty um, powerful month, okay? It's a month of releasing. It's a month of understanding more about ourselves on a deep level, okay? Our unconscious drives, motivations and um, again taking charge and making those changes. So it all starts at the beginning of the month when we have Venus conjuncting up to the south node, okay? This is on the first, right at the beginning of the month. This is enjoying and wanting to release the old energies, okay? With the Uranus in this part of your chart, which is your ninth house, and the south node here in your ninth house, this whole Uranus-Pluto square business has been about you releasing from some old ideas, perhaps old philosophies, old spiritual ideas, old notions of what you require for your life path, okay? Breaking free from these things that are perhaps getting in the way of your expansion, of your growth, of your adventure of life, okay? That's been the south node element of it. And then Uranus there is helping you break free and find that freedom that is so necessary for us to have the expansive open horizon, you see, of that ninth house. So Venus going over the south node on the first is suggesting there's an enjoyment of letting go of these old belief systems, these old philosophical belief systems, the old ways of thinking about life path, of your principles in life, old principles that are no longer serving you. All of these things are ruled by the ninth house. Also university studies, travel, overseas things, but on a personal level for all of us, definitely the adventurous element and expansive elements of life, including our life path. So Venus going over here is wanting it, okay? And this is how the first part of the month unfolds, is wanting, feeling the optimism and wanting change, okay? And in many ways to break free and wanting some excitement, you know, wanting the freedom, of course, of the life path. And now on the first, while that's happening, wanting this, you know, uh, releasing the old, we've got Mercury opposite Jupiter, okay? And that Jupiter trining up to Uranus of this Uranus-Pluto square. So what that means is essentially there's optimism, there's expansiveness, there's this, this new tinge of wanting, okay, which is creating an optimism, okay? Now we want to balance this optimism because it is involving an opposition with Mercury, which just means that you guys recently went through an understanding about relationships with Mercury retrograde in your seventh house last month, okay? Seventh house is relationships, partnerships, legal matters, and uh, anything that has to do with one-on-one -on -one connections, but generally relationships. So you just want to balance all of this expansion that's happening in your life because Jupiter is in your first house of your life, overall life, your goals, your ambitions, your drives, your desires. You just want to balance that with other. Okay, these things you recently learned about relationships. And if you do that, then it's a very, I mean, it's a positive element anyways because it's involving Jupiter, but it won't be an over um, optimism. You see, it'll be a grounded optimism because you're balancing self and other here. But in either case, it's an optimism that starts the month. It lasts all the way through the fourth with Jupiter trining up to Uranus, wanting that freedom, wanting that excitement. Now then on the fourth, we've got Venus going over that Uranus and Mars going over the south node. Fourth is another significant day here. So with Venus wanting the freedom, okay? So on one hand, we wanted that releasing. Now we want the freedom, okay? Then Mars going over the south node is drive. Now this is where things become energetic, okay? 
Mars is about our ambitions, our drive, moving forward. Going over the south node means not only do you just want to release the attachments, the old notions and old ideas or whatever it is regarding that ninth house, but you're driven to do it. And you want to utilize this energy. Mars is very powerful this month. Okay, so it's going to conjunct that south node and then later it's going to conjunct up to that Uranus of this whole activating really in many ways this whole final Uranus Pluto square. So use that positive energy, get the ball moving. That's what Mars does is it gets things moving and through that whether you know exactly what it is you're releasing from or what the details are, that stuff seems to be coming later in the astrology. This is just about making, just changing you know, wherever there is, wherever you feel like there's this excitement brewing and this new interest or whatever it is that's helping you drive and move these things forward. That's around the fourth with that Mars energy. Then on the fifth, we've got the full moon in Leo, which is your second house. Last month, you had a new moon in your eighth house, perhaps understanding something new in regards to your transparency with yourself, the deeper elements of yourself. Okay, and perhaps transparency in your relationships as well, but uncovering perhaps some deep things about self. Okay, so that's good. So that new moon is now coming, coming up to the full moon on the fifth in the second house, which is the house of your sense of self-worth. Because once we uncover the depth and who we are at the core level, then we begin to see the things we want to enjoy in this life. And that's what the second house symbolizes. So this is a fullness here and another optimistic energy especially because it's in Leo and it's trining up to Pluto okay exactly trining up to Pluto so again positive life force energy regarding your sense of self-worth so there's a boost here feeling good feeling like you can make these changes or whatever okay but feeling like you're worthy you have that value you have the abundance too. seeing the abundance around you on the fifth is really gonna activate it okay then on the 9th, we've got Mars trining up to Jupiter. All right, so this is the positive energy, positive optimism, that drive. All right, so now we're Venus. Where Venus was aspecting that Jupiter, it was uh, enjoying it. Now it's driven to do it. Again, lots of this drive energy from the 4th onward. But optimistic and beneficial nonetheless. And a lot of this has to do with the opportunities and expansions that are retrograde right now with Jupiter in your first, but you, you saw last year, towards the end of last year in particular, you saw the expansion, the opportunities, okay, in your life. Actually, it was all of last year with Jupiter in your first house. So you've seen them. So now these op that's creating this optimism, you see, these expansions, these opportunities in your life. Now, on the 11th is when things become real, they become grounded. So on one hand, we had the, you know, the open horizon. Now is the opportunity from the 11th onward to make it a reality. On the 11th, Mars conjuncts up to Uranus. And on that very same day, the Uranus squaring up to Pluto goes exact. And it goes exact all the way from the 11th through the 22nd. So you can see the Mars energy here is activating it. It's that drive to make those changes. And in this sense, a lot of what's activating this month is, is that freedom, is this bottling up of energy that's now ready for this change. And it's all individual. Some of us will feel the bottling up more than others. It just depends on how we've been utilizing this Uranus-Pluto square energy. But the energy's there because Uranus over, excuse me, a Mars over Uranus is always a very energetic and powerful element, especially with another major aspect like this okay so use it and again it has to do with that ninth house breaking free starting something new regarding life path philosophy astrology divinity spirituality prayer your higher connections anything that opens you up mentally spiritually or physically okay that's the ninth house then on the 12th we got Venus going into Aries and this is where I think all of us are going to start to enjoy the overall process of putting the energy forward. Okay, Venus in, in Aries is this opportunity to enjoy getting things done, getting that ball moving, you see. And that's in your 10th house. So there's a shifting taking place here, mid-month, where the fast-moving planets slowly one by one go into your 10th house of career, public sector, anything you're doing for the public or for service, okay, usually career. So enjoy it. Enjoy it from the 12th onward. That's 
where Venus is, that's where your enjoyment can best be had, okay? Making connections at work, enjoying your work or career or public stuff. And it starts on the 12th. It's very energetic. It gets that energy moving. Now on the 14th, we do have Saturn going retrograde this month. Saturn recently went into Scorpio at the end of last month. And this is the first retrograde position he's going to have in Scorpio, okay, which is in your fifth house. So recently, towards the end of last year, this one's the end of last year, you had this sort of foundation being built in regards to your sense of self-expression. All right, You having fun is requiring, as it always does, discipline, hard work, and maturity. So that's what you want to step into. That's been the energy since the tail end of last month, is taking the responsible approach to having fun. Now Saturn's going retrograde, so it's an opportunity to reflect on that. Okay? How are, you, how are these structures being built? Okay? How are they coming along? How can they perhaps be restructured? But that's not the time. It's just thinking about it, seeing all the opportunities, all the different angles of these structures you're building in regards to your self-expression. This is just the house. fifth house is the house of fun, right? of enjoyment. So are these, are these structures helping you enjoy life in the long run? In the long term, that's, these are the types of things you want to reflect on from the 14th onward, and it's playing a part in all of these changes you see. Now on the 14th, we have the sun going into Pisces, which is that ninth house. Now the middle of the month here on the 14th is when things become exceptionally aware. Okay, we start to gain this awareness. We start to gain this understanding. Uh, the sun always illuminates, and in this sense is illuminating Pisces, which is the cusp of your ninth house, your ninth house here. So you have this torch, you have this light, helping you see the life path stuff, helping you see the philosophy, the principles, all those ninth house matters. And it's a lot of this is unconscious or spiritual, because the sun in, in Pisces always illuminates, okay? And that's where all of us are gaining this understanding of ourselves on a, on a deeper level or spiritual level. And it starts here on the 14th. Then on the 18th, we have Mercury going over Neptune, which is, of course, understanding more about spirituality. But in this sense, it has to do with your 8th house. The, for you, the deeper elements. This is very much about your subconscious drives, subconscious influences. You guys have had the Neptune transiting your 8th house, which is helping you go with the flow. There's been this opportunity to assist you in going with the flow in regards to the deeper elements of life with transparency, to have compassion by being vulnerable and opening yourself up with yourself and your relationships. Okay, so Mercury going over here is an understanding of that around the 18th. Again, you can see it's more and more spiritual understanding. Spiritual understandings go from the 14th all the way into April. Okay. Then on the 20th, we have the solar eclipse energy. Okay, the solar eclipse taking place in Pisces, that ninth house of yours. So this is where the beginnings shape up. And the work that you put in here in regards to the Uranus-Pluto square perhaps created this. Okay, because this is when it ends. On the 22nd, we have the ending of this Uranus-Pluto square. So the new beginning here, and this is very powerful, solar eclipse for the next six months, but also for your whole life in general because the eclipses always reorient us on our life path. And so for you, it has to do with your life path specifically, okay, with the tapping into the adventurous side of life, philosophy, all those things. So something new brewing up there, an understanding, and that's leading you into April, okay, but it's slow. And you want to pay attention around the 20th. You want to pay attention around this whole time, new insights, intuition, things, information coming to you, because what's being laid at the foundation level here is the ideas and concepts that you're later going to be forming as the April comes around and the months, uh, the, the next few months come around. On the 23rd, we've got Mars going into Aries. Mars loves being in Aries, right? Dignity rule, rules it. So there's wanting to take charge, okay? And this is where things start to become like, okay, we took the energy, but this is perhaps you're starting to see the progress, you see? Or it could be for some of you these new insights that you gained in regards to the ninth house, creating more energy, okay, creating more ambition, more drive. And this is in your tenth house. So something being of service, something about giving back, something you're doing on a public level, or perhaps just channeling this energy into your work, you see. Because the life path house, the ninth, always comes right before the tenth. It's not until we understand what our life path, what our destiny is, 
do we have any sense or clue of what we're doing for a living, what our career is, because that is the expression of our life path, you see. So that's what it, sh that's what it looks like for you, this shift, of understanding life path, and then, then having this desire and drive to put it into your work or career in some way, you see. On the 27th, we've got Mercury going into Pisces, that ninth house, further understanding, okay, into April, these life path things. I think you're just going to be thinking about it for one reason or another, thinking about the life path stuff. All right. Then on the 30th, the sun goes over the south node, again, spiritual understanding. The south node is what we need to release to have spiritual enlightenment or spiritual understanding. So the sun going over here is an awareness of this past ideas, past notions, things that were holding you back in regards to those ninth house things. Okay, life path, spirituality, etc. So again, more illumination and the illumination slowly trickles in through uh, the beginning of April as well. So it's a slow process, okay, but it is a very catalytic month. All right, well, I hope you guys have a fantastic month. Thanks, thank you again for all of your support. If you have any specific questions, please let me know. If you'd like a personal reading, please let me know. And uh, do check out my weekly horoscopes for this week. I also do daily horoscopes as well and the yearly if you'd like the big picture perspective. All right, talk to you guys next time. Take care.